Easy peasy, welcome back to another episode. I've started from the bottom, the road to glory. Right, weekend league. Now, this weekend league does fall on a Sunday for us in the UK on uh, Father's Day. So I'm not going to be putting that too much, you know, too much effort into uh, this weekend league. But let's get into the middle batch of games. Now, we did have a comment yesterday of do you ever play average teams? You can see by this team, you would put that down as a completely and utterly average team. And for some reason, whether it's this new dynamic difficulty that everybody is taping on about, these are the teams we struggle against, right? 85 for BDO, making us go 1-0 down from the penalty spot. And these teams, we should be absolutely breezing past. But when you face these kind of teams, it feels like you you just can't absolutely... It feels like you can't do anything. It feels like you've got some kind of force field against your players. It's really crazy. As we go 2-0 down. Usually with these teams, you would say that they probably come with a worse player. Because obviously, if there was a decent player around this stage, you'd have loads of special cards. But that's not necessarily always the case. They could have just started the game a bit later and stuff like that. How do you know this isn't the best kid in the world and he's just started an RTG? and that's his team after a week who knows man you just you don't know so you can't really write off these teams saying they're immediately rubbish but man you you know looking at them on paper you should be absolutely be able to breeze through these teams so i don't know i don't know anyway 2-2 two, two, we're back in it and we eventually do get a winner ericsson tries to play a pass through it, it it's still it just bounce FIFA bounce, bounce 19, that's what it's been this weekend, but we do eventually get the winner, thanks to Firmino, and he actually quits before half time, so we win it 3-2 in the end, but this game, this gameplay this weekend, man, it just hasn't been on point, um, I've got to say, if it wasn't for Ericsson scoring a lot of our goals, I think we would have been in more trouble than what we end up being by the end of this batch of games, um, Bounces everywhere, just slow, delayed gameplay. Just It was a struggle. It was a struggle. And we won quite a few games. So even in that, it just, I don't know, it just didn't feel comfortable. Because the gameplay didn't feel comfortable, I found myself taking a lot more first-time shots just to try and manipulate some kind of gameplay. You can see there the ball running behind Ericsson. And that happened a lot. That was just a simple pass across the box which should have gone straight into his path. Instead, it's like the players aren't aligned to the gameplay. And it was just a little bit of a struggle. Now, onto this one here. And that's the most interesting team. I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen anybody rocking 10 UCL cards. It's just mental. Um, but then he has got Morata up front. So you know what's going to happen. This kid's going to get an absolute pasting. And even in this, which he does get an absolute pasting in, I could say that we probably should have scored more because the ball still wasn't going where we wanted the ball to go. It was just no disrespect to this person that we played. He just wasn't very good at the game. So even, you know, on, you know, 65% good gameplay, we was, able, we was able to absolutely batter him. But it was an absolute struggle. And as I just said, if it wasn't for Ericsson, we'd be in absolute trouble. But an Ericsson absolutely showed up in this game so we go 2-0 up we're on the attack there for me no choice to get it across again didn't work but it eventually falls to um ericsson and he scores his second of the game but you can see there we tried to just pass it across with Firmino, and it just wasn't going where we wanted it it was it's just fifa 19 bounce bounce back edition again man uh, ericsson on the ball again there's that animation again from ericsson which we spoke about in yesterday's video i've seen that now three or four times it's a weird animation where it just gets caught up in his feet. But it does get uh, Ericsson his hat trick. So I suppose when you're winning 4 0, you can't complain. But honestly, we should have been 7 0 up at half time. But we only 5. Only 5. As Ericsson gets his fourth of the game so far. So into the second half, he's getting a little bit agitated now. So that just means we can put on a bit more pressure because he's sliding absolutely everywhere. As uh, Ericsson carries on running and gets his sixth goal of the game. No, fifth goal of the game to make it 6-0. 72 minutes gone on the clock. He honestly has lost his head at this point. But honestly, the ball wasn't going where we wanted it to. Passes were still shambolic. Ball bouncing everywhere as Ericsson now gets his sixth goal of the game. And it just, you know, it's weird where you're winning a game 7-0... And you're still complaining about gameplay. Sorry, 8-0. As Ericsson gets his seventh goal of the game. And that game was a shambles. 
if that was smooth gameplay, that would have been 14-0. Easy. But the ball wasn't going where we wanted it to go. It was just bouncing everywhere. It was a shambles, man. And bear in mind, we've just won that game by a lot of goals. And I'm still complaining about the gameplay. So it's no saltiness or anything. It just... Something was off this weekend, and I don't know why. Um, Friday was... was the best it's been so far as recording this i've played some games on saturday saturday was a shambles and sunday was worse than saturday so friday was the best day again you'll see you'll see how we finished off the weekend in tomorrow's video but it was just it was moody man anyway onto this game his ericsson scores one my ericsson scores one and again ericsson on the score sheet again like i said if it wasn't for ericsson this weekend I think we would have struggled even more. It was just, it was hard to pass the ball where we wanted. Look at this. Bounce back City and it eventually falls to Eusebio. But it shouldn't have gone to Eusebio. I'm moaning and that is my goal that I've scored. You see what I mean? It's just crazy, man. We played the ball the opposite side. It bounces off his defender and then eventually lands to Eusebio. Does an over a kick. And I'm still moaning about the gameplay. Ah, oh, crazy times, man. Crazy times. The things this game does to you. Anyway, into the uh, last game bit of footage from this uh, episode. Um, and this was a weird one. This kid was a very, very good player. But again, we was, we was stuck under this lock of not being able to pass where we wanted it to go. Uh, and we eventually go 1-0 down thanks to a nice little finesse from outside the box from uh, his team of the season tots and then Ericsson again gets us on the score sheet and this goes all the way into extra time as it's 1-1 and then Ericsson scores his second goal of the game to make it 2-1 in extra time in the 96 minute then our defenders are absolutely all over the place his son gets a second of the game to make it 2-2 in extra time and then that makes us go into the 111th minute and we're on the attack, Aurier, really slow passing. Look how slow the ball's moving. So it's making me shoot first time because the ball isn't traveling fast enough. So I can't do the build up I want. Luckily, we managed to get it in the goal to make it 3-2. And then he makes it 3-3 thanks to a nice cross and a header, which takes us to penalties. And then the dreaded, I can't move the ball anywhere but the middle penalties again, means we miss our first two. We manage to score our, our third one. As that was down the middle again. We step up for our fourth penalty with Ericsson. I am pressing all the way to the right. You can see my actual head movement. Doesn't go to the right. It goes roughly down the middle again. So, I don't know. This game, man. He goes down the middle again, roughly, give or take. Uh, we need to score this to stay in the game. I go as left as I can. Luckily, it actually moves this time. And we manage to get a goal. If we save this, we're still in it. Please save it. Come on. As his Clovert steps up, we don't save it, unfortunately, and we end up losing. So we go 14 wins. So that's, I don't know, was that six and three or something in that batch of games? Um, we lost two games on penalties and then one loss against this really good super team who absolutely clattered us. But even in the six wins that we got, I couldn't move my players, man. It was an absolute mess. Even in the 8 0 victory that we got, it was an absolute mess. And it's just i don't know so this is what we're going to do this weekend because it's father's day on the sunday as well i'm limiting my time i think we're only going to go to goal two this weekend so in tomorrow's video when we do the wrap up we only need three more wins um you know apart from neymar and umbop there's not that many that i'm actually really excited for in this team of the season um granted lala will be beautiful granted mendy would be beautiful but, you know, they're only left-backs and right-backs. I'm, I'm looking for them players that can excite us and stuff like that and get us really excited to play the game. I don't think a left-back and a right-back does that. I wouldn't complain if we got Lala. I wouldn't complain if we got Mendy. But, obviously, the headliners from this one are Mbappe and uh, Neymar. And I think the chances of doing that, unless you've bought all the loan cards in the world, I think the chance of getting 98 Neymar is quite remote. Right then, before we go, let's have a quick look at what they did last night. So... We do have the Lama Dama Ding Dong guaranteed tots. We won't be doing this. You do need an 82 rated squad for this. Honestly, what is I think there's one player that looks decent-ish, and that's Mina. Everything else I really couldn't care less about. Uh, we don't need the tots players because we've got loads coming from weekly objectives and stuff like that. I literally just don't want to do it. Might as well save my players. Uh, I just can't see the point, man. I can't see the point. And then the other thing they released last night is this one. And this card looks absolutely nutty, man. Uh, high, medium, four-star, four-star. 
Uh, 91 acceleration, 91 sprint speed. Shooting looks absolutely brilliant. 94 composure as well. His agility and balance, great defensive stats. Uh, obviously, because he's short, he's jumping, he's a little bit, you know, umming and ahhing. But 93 stamina. This looks an absolutely fantastic card. However, it is quite expensive. By the time we record, I'm not too sure what it's quite running you up to. But it's in. It's probably just a shade, you know, a shade cheaper than what Merton's is. Uh, 86 rated 2 informs, 86 rated 2 informs, and then an 87 rated team. He's coming to take your coins, boys. Uh, he does look fantastic, though, but of course we won't be doing that either. That's just a bit of a deaded waste of coins at this stage. But if you are going to do him, he looks a fantastic, fantastic card. Right then, that is it for today's episode. Gameplay is a shambles. We'll wrap up the weekend league tomorrow, but we are going to stop pretty short. We're not going to play all of our games because of it being Father's Day and stuff like that. And honestly... We need a little bit of a break from this game. But let me know. Let me know how you got on on Weekend League. Thanks for watching, my friends. Drop a thumbs up and I'll catch you in a bit.